bulls, but some of them have been bred purely for their looks. I think this kind of breeding really tells us a lot about what kind of people we are, what it is that we like about dogs. How would you describe Lenny? Mm. One word. Uh, cute. Oh, cute. Cute. Uh, cute, adorable and funny. I just look at her and I, I just smile, particularly when she's sleeping. She's very, very cute. We all know we find them cute, but what is it exactly that makes us respond to dogs so powerfully? Psychiatrist Morten Kringelbach has a theory as to why the way dogs look has such a profound impact on us. The need to nurture, I think, is something that is so deep in us that we find it very difficult to resist. Dogs, puppies, have very infant-like features, and maybe that's one of the reasons why we think they are, you know, so cute, is that they remind us of the infants that we are, so to speak, programmed to like. There's something about the way that the facial features are organized that makes us want to care for them. And it's about having a large forehead, it's about having large eyes, big ears, and there's something about that that almost unconsciously we cannot help ourselves but actually like. How are you feeling in there? Good. Um, we're just going to go on one more scan. Dr. Kringlebach is interested in exploring how strongly we respond to these infantile features. A state-of-the-art MEG scanner was used to measure people's brain activity while they were looking at images of baby faces and adult faces. What we found was that within a seventh of a second, there was activity in the frontal part of the brain, just over the eyebrows, in the orbital frontal cortex. That was present when you were looking at the infant faces, but not when you were looking at the adult faces. This part of the brain is very much involved in emotional responses. And so what we think we may have stumbled across here is really in many ways the brain equivalent of the parental instinct. There's almost like a wired in automatic reaction. Kringlebach is now testing to see if we have a similar response to dogs' cute features. The data is still being analyzed, but he suspects there will be a comparable signature in regions of the brain associated with nurturing responses. Just as with the infant, when you're looking at dogs, you find it very hard to control your emotions. You find it very hard not to get that need to nurture. Wow, look at that. What a nice belly. Mushu, mushu. <laughs> oh, boo. You're so cute, Jesse. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. But responding to pets as though they were children could be seen in a very different light. I think we can think of little puppies brought home as parasites. They don't do anything useful. They're not perceived as a food source. They're not perceived as a guard dog. They are simply brought home for fun. They are essentially moving our focus away from having children onto having pets. I think it's safe to say that dogs have evolutionarily been very successful. If you compare them to wolves, you'll see that wolves are now an endangered species, while dogs, of course, are all around the world. The, the cuckoo is perhaps quite a good analogy, because the baby cuckoo, of course, being planted in somebody else's nest, prompts mother bird to look after baby cuckoo, even though there's nothing in it for the mother bird at all. They actually through their behavior, through their looks, gets exactly what they want. They may be parasitic in that we cannot help ourselves, but what we get in return is probably sometimes much greater than what we put in. Mm.